In this, the second of my molding head videos, I'm going to show you what molding heads can do, what they can't do, and what they can do better than any other system. So while we've seen that the molding head can do rabbits, that's really not enough of a reason to buy one on its own. So let's look at some of the other things that a molding head can do that are difficult, if not impossible, to do in other ways. So here I've got a piece of stock. It could be a post, it could be a rail, it could be just a flat piece, whatever. I want to put a V-groove right down the middle, another one 90 degrees to it, crossing it, and then two more at 30 degree angles. Now obviously the groove down the center could be done with a router bit, and of course I could do the 90 and the other ones using a miter gauge, but it becomes difficult. Here it becomes simplicity itself. First we set up the rip fence and we're going to make the slot right down the center. We're not removing a lot of material here, so it's a pretty easy cut. Now I can set up my miter gauge. I've got a mark where I want that cut to start, and I can come in and make my 90. Set the miter gauge to 30 degrees in one direction. And then the other. advantages of the molding head is that because I'm working here at the table saw I've got the advantage of my miter gauge which allows me to very precisely set angles and I've got all the space on the table to work I can get some pretty good results by using the molding head on the table saw rather than going to the router table to do all this work. Now here I've got a an OG profile molding knife in the molding head cutter. I've got a tall fence and I can mold this profile into a panel by running across it edge on, which is why I have the tall fence here. This comes out nice, but it's not terribly impressive. We can do that on the router table pretty easily. But if I want to put that same profile on the end, wrapping around the end of a post, that's a little bit more difficult to do at the router table. So here I've got the same setup. I've reversed my miter gauge, put a stop on the end, and now we'll be able to do the four sides of this part using the table saw. profile cut that's not quite as easy to do on the router table. I can do it with my molding head cutter. Now I've always maintained that in woodworking there's very little that can only be done one way. And the molding head cutter offers you another way to do many different tasks. But frankly, none of what I've shown you so far is really outstanding. But I've saved the best for last. Here I've got a triple bead knife set up in the molding head cutter. And to be able to put a triple bead wrapped around a post or a leg or whatever you happen to be making is something that can be done on the router table, but
but requires a point cutting round over bit, which is not terribly common, and requires several setups, one for each half of the beads that you're going to do. So this would be four different setups, run the part, move the fence, run the part, move the fence, and hope that every time you've moved the fence, you've gotten it exactly right. By using a triple bead cutter, I know that the profile that I cut is going to be what's on the cutter. And so I can actually mill a set of beads running around a post anywhere in the center of the post using the molding head cutter. It's one of those tasks that it can do better than virtually anything else. And this is the primary reason that I keep it around my shop. The other option is that if I wanted a single bead to wrap around or even two beads, I could fairly easily regrind these knives to fit the profile I want to make. So it is very versatile and it gives me the ability to do some work, beads, coves, whatever I want to wrap around a post, a square post so it can't be turned on the lathe, this gives me an option to do that in a way that nothing else can.